All righty, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to our weekly outlook. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Today is July 29th. It is our very last week of July. Uh, we've had an incredible week, or in, uh, not just an incredible couple weeks, but we've had an incredible month, a lot of growth on our accounts this month. Um, I think right somewhere right around 15% if we check out the um, statistics and the MyFX books there at about 15% for the week. Got a couple other people dropping some stuff. Pound yen, we will definitely look at that. Kevin looking at UJ. Yes, we will definitely be looking at these pairs, guys. So um, first and foremost, we're going to look at the economic calendar. But as I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned this on the weekly webinars, but I know I mentioned this to the private group. Um, now on the webinars, I'm going to be marking now that uh, Trading View made this nice update. You guys will know which pairs I'm most interested going right into the week. So this week, I'm going to be looking at uh, pound yen, dollar yen, uh, NZD yen, and euro AUD. These are the pairs that I'm immediately interested in to start off the week. This could change. So you know, if you're in the in the private group where I'm doing the webinars each day for you guys, Monday through Thursday, then you'll know if my bias changes. But just definitely, like my disclaimer is. Uh, you know, these are these are just my opinions, my bias in the markets, and please just be, you know, taking these trades on your own and know that my bias can change throughout the week. So just where I stand right now doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to stand here, you know, 24 hours from now or 36 hours from now. So, or my bias could change, you know, could stay the same the whole week. Each week um, is really different. So if you're taking your own trades based on, you know, the, you know, based on the, this analysis, make sure it's just that based on your own analysis. So, Starting off the week, this is a very big week in terms of the economic calendar. Uh, you guys should definitely be very careful this week and just be very aware of what's going on. We have two interest rate decisions and NFP among, and that's just like the, the three main things. There's a ton of other high impact news, as you can see scrolling throughout. There's all sorts of unemployment rates, GDPs, all sorts of stuff coming out this week. But the main uh, key events that are on tap for this key risk events that are on tap for this week is going to be the Bank of Japan interest rate, which is Monday evening. So it's going to be tomorrow evening. Um, that may be uh, different depending on where you are, different time zone maybe. But we do have the interest rate decision for the, the Bank of Japan. So expect all yen pairs to be very volatile. So what that means is, as you guys just saw, or, and as you guys are about to see, I'm going to be going over my analysis on a lot of yen pairs. Um, I the analysis that I give out right now is just going to be kind of like my overall weekly technical outlook on those three pairs. This uh, interest rate decision could, it, well, is going to create a lot of volatility and could, you know, go negatively or not go in the favor that we want, which could create, you know, I mean, it's, it could create a, a bad trade if you get into that trade. So I do not recommend doing any trading on any of the yen pairs that we're going to look at until after the interest rate decision tomorrow. Uh, following that this week, uh, we have an interest rate decision from the Federal Reserve on Wednesday. So this is huge because this only happens eight times a year. The Federal Reserve meets, meets eight times a year to decide if they're going to raise interest rates or not. And it looks like it's forecasted this week for them to keep interest rates the same because they just raised interest rates um, from point or 1.5% to 1.75% to 1.75% to 2 percent. So that's why you see the less than two right here because it's not actually at two percent. It's in between. It's a uh, in between 1.75 and two percent. Okay. So the 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 Federal Reserve, unlike most central banks, they generally raise and decrease their interest rates by a quarter of a percent at a time, um, rather than half a percent like a lot of um, uh, like a lot of other. Uh, central banks do at, at, at a time. So that's very, very important. That's going to create a lot of volatility on a lot of US dollar pairs. So, um, you know, I I'm, I'm really just want to kind of see how this week starts to play out and see if there's any really favorable situations. But, you know, I'm going to, we're going to go over the setups in just a moment. And then of course, oh, I'm sorry, this three interest rate decisions this week, because Thursday, we have another interest rate decision. Okay. And then Friday is NFP. Okay, non-farm payrolls for the U.S. dollars, first Friday of August. So huge, huge week on tap. You guys remember last week, right? We go, we look at last week, nothing, right? Nothing. A couple things here and there. We had the GDP pop up, right? That wasn't there at the beginning of last week, but popped up at the middle of last week toward, 
for the end of last week. So very light week last week. This week, huge week. Huge, huge, huge volatile week. You know, and, and we've, we've been, we're going to look at the markets. We've seen a lot of volatile, I mean, I'm sorry, a lot of consolidation the past couple weeks, right? Let's start off with the dollar index, right? For the past couple weeks, the dollar index has, has really just found a top right around the 95 area and been consolidating around the highs after being bullish for so long. So I think the markets right now are going to respond to this volatility this week with some sort of movement. Um, in, and I mean, I think it's pretty imminent that there's going to be some type of movement, movement this week. So in regards to the dollar index, where I stand, I'm not super interested in trading the dollar right now, but it is just consolidative around these highs. The key levels to be watching is this 95 area in this current support. As of right now, while the dollar index is inside this range, I'm not really interested in trading like a pair like Euro USD, which has correlation to this. I would rather wait for the confirmation on a breakout of the 95 or respecting this resistance and bouncing. Um, overall, right, the, the long-term trend is definitely bearish, right? We've found a top around the 95 area and just been consolidating around these highs without a very big correction, right? We haven't really seen much of a correction um, in terms of the bears stepping into this market. So overall price action is bullish, but again, that doesn't mean uh, just like last week, right? I was beginning of last week, for those of you guys that watched last week's webinar, uh, I was bearish initially on the dollar and we got that. We got that bearish downside on the dollar. So um, I was only interested in doing some intraday trading last week because the setups looked really nice. This week, I'm more on the sidelines. Uh, gold, very, uh, just like a, a very confluent to the dollar index. It's doing the exact opposite. It's consolidating around its lows. It's very bearish though. So um, I'm not interested in trading gold, but I do see the possibility of gold going lower. Euro USD. Um, this pair is pretty clean in terms of price action. It's pretty simple in terms of just having to sit on our hands and wait for a good trade. Um, it's consolidating around the lows, doing the exact opposite of the dollar index. Um, and, and the key levels to watch is this 93.6% uh, retracement level, which is the 117.56 area. And then, of course, the lows. Just kind of watch this zone while Euro USD is inside of this range. I personally am not interested in trading Euro USD. But once we get a confirmation, whether that's a correction and we get that, this bounce off of this bottom, or we break and continue lower, we're going to trade respectively. USD says Frank, opposite of Euro USD, right? So I don't really have to talk much about this pair. Just watch the support and watch the watch. We can mark off the support. Watch the support and then also watch the resistance. USD Swiss Frank is definitely a trickier pair to trade because it is trading around parity. So you guys notice every other pair has, you know, some sort of exchange rate. You know, that's the whole idea with the currency, right? How much one thing is worth of another. USD Swiss Franc right now, it's when it's pretty much one to one. Okay. You're going to get one dollar for one Swiss Franc. So there's not really an, ex an exchange rate if there, if you will, if that makes sense. So lots of manipulation, lots of opp opportunity for manipulation, but we should see it largely move respectively to the dollar index. Dollar index goes up, we should see this pair go up. Dollar index goes down, we should see this pair go down. Pound dollar, I'm not interested in trading whatsoever. I'm actually just going to skip over that pair. Pound yen, I do have it marked off just because I want to. I just want you guys to look at a couple areas. Pound yen is fairly bearish. It is largely bearish, and that's the stance that I have. I just want to take a look at last week's uh, and, and the week prior's weekly candle. We had a nice rejection once again off the 148 area after a break of this overall trend. So we were largely bullish for a long time, and we did break this trend line earlier this year, and we've just been consolidate, consolidating right below this previous resistance zone. So if you actually remove everything. If you just remove everything, you can see resistance, 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 support. You can see support lies all through here and then resistance. And that is why the 148 area that I've talked about and I have on my chart is such a significant area in my opinion. So a couple of weeks ago when we actually broke through this zone, started to consolidate, we got that 
retest a couple weeks ago and then just the week before last got a nice bearish engulfing candle and my outlook is largely bearish on pound yen right now however i i personally would not be interested in placing any shorts until this trend line is broken so this is kind of the setup that i'm looking at on pound yen is watch this trend line and then also this trend line has some nice confluence where we got this double bottom a couple weeks ago so this is the zone to watch pretty much like the 144 area so we're still well above this zone right now we're trading at the 155 50 area and that's the 144 zone that we're just a little bit above 144 that we're looking at so about 100 150 pips um above the zone that we're watching right now but that's not the move you know from here to here isn't the move that i'm interested what i would be interested in is if we break this trend line and we confirm further downside i'd be interested in this move from 144 down to 140 that's a 400 pip move that we can catch So that's what my eyes are on. If we get it, we'll get it. And, you know, but we're still 150 pips away. That's nothing though, really for the, for pound yen. We can see that we've seen this pair move 500 pips in a week before. We actually did like a few weeks ago. A lot of you guys remember this drop. We actually caught this drop. We shorted like right here. We didn't catch the full drop. I think we caught like 200 pips of it or something like the 260 pips or 280 pips. But this moved like 500 pips down. We see that happen in one week. So it's not crazy that we could just see, boom, just drop. And really, if you look at this support, if, if this does break and you look to the left, right? Because that's how you identify support and resistance is by looking to the left of price. There's, this is on the daily chart too. There's really nothing holding it down. There's really no, no saying uh, how far, or no telling how far this could really go. Um, dollar yen. Dollar yen, um, I would also be bearish on this week. However, there is arguments for buying because it is respecting the, uh, you know, a couple different levels of support, the 50 EMA, this actual trend line right now. So I'm not bearish on it yet. I'm not bearish until this trend line breaks. If and when this trend line breaks, I have a very similar outlook to pound yen. If this trend line breaks, um, I'd be liking to get, and that, that, that would also be this 50 EMA. And then it also would be like the reverse, this, the previous resistance of this, right? We have this resistance here, a little bit of resistance here and resistance here. And you guys might have remembered when this broke, it kind of just shot straight up, as you can see. And now this is kind of support. So this is a very significant zone, just as pound yen is a very significant zone, just below current price. So significant area to watch. And then that on dollar yen would be about a 200 pip drop that I would be interested in. And that correlates to this on the daily okay so gi this giant range that dollar yen has been in we broke out for a little bit back here earlier this year but primarily have been in this range for the past couple of years year or two okay so that is my outlook for those pairs um AUD USD and NZD USD both of these pairs not interested in trading right now they are both consolidating around their lows. Just something to notice. Um, I also have it. I marked up NZV. This is on last week's one of the private webinars I did to outline that for you guys. NZD USD. One thing just to keep in mind, this was an old target. This target is still valid as long as we stay below the one, this major uh, previous support area. So just something to notice on New, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, if you guys trade this pair, which I think you guys should. The price action is pretty clean. We have some, we have this major zone. So I just want all you guys, if you don't have anything on the chart, on your chart, just have at least this major zone. Go on the weekly, zoom out on NZD USD, and draw out this major zone. And you'll see how respective prices to this area. And so that's kind of what we're using for confirmation on the long term. If we continue to consolidate around this area and then break these lows, we're going to expect some major downside. If we pull back above this area, maybe find some consolidation up here, then that's, oops, I don't know what that was. Some consolidation right here. Then that, at that point, we might be getting actually an inverted head and shoulders right? We might get an inverted head and shoulders and then the, the real big move might be up higher. 
So the market's always kind of in either an or situation. Well, not always an either or situation. A lot of times there's going to be more argument to one side or the other. Right now, just one of those one of those pairs that you just have to sit on the sidelines for and be super patient for. USD CAD. I'm not really interested in trading USD CAD either. I did call this last week though. If you guys watched last week's webinar, I called this drop last week. Uh, at the oh, I don't know why it keeps doing that. At the beginning of last week, we were above, We are still sitting above this support. I said we're going to break this zone, or that was my bias, that we were going to break this zone and move lower based on being bullish on gold and bearish on the dollar and bearish. Yeah, that was it, and we did see that. So it's very consolidative right now. You can see on the four-hour, not really moving a whole lot. Definitely argument for more downside, but I'm not interested in trading it. If I don't have it marked, I'm not interested in trading it. And let's skip all the way down to NZD JPY. So this definitely taking credit for this guys. So I posted this beginning of last week. We can kind of see where prices are right now. So this is a long-term trade setup that I'm interested in. My targets are at 97.20. And as far as I'm concerned, we can obviously see that this is still a valid setup. Price is still bearish, still following the trade setup nicely and um, moving nicely. So Targets are still lower, 7420. Euro AUD, this is a. I'm actually going to remove this. This is, you guys don't have to pay attention to this. We took two trades on this. We actually shorted this twice last week. So, in, a, in the premium group last week, um, this initially dropped at the beginning of last week. And, and on this retest, we shorted right here, got a perfect entry, moved. And I think our stop loss was like right here or something like that. Our. We came all the way down here. We used a trailing stop loss, locked in profits on the retracement. We, once again, I actually shorted right here at the start of this four hour candle. Perfect entry and dropped once again and we ended up closing our trade with a trailing stop loss once again at the end of last week. So we caught both of these shorts. Um, really good risk to rewards also. Uh, even though our targets were lower, we still um, had over a one to one risk to reward when our stop loss was set to break even. So um, anyways, where do I stand with Euro AUD? Just long term, um, it's still in this range, but just watch this support this week, guys. Watch this support, watch this 50 EMA. Um, the main thing to watch is just this overall movement of price, right? We were largely bullish for a couple, like all of 2017 pretty much not the beginning of 2017, but the la the 75% of 2017 and most of 2018, we were bullish. I'm sorry, not most of it. I don't know why I'm getting so mixed up, but up until May. So almost, almost halfway of 2018. And then we dropped and now we've made that correction, really consolidated, really failed to move higher. Um, and pretty much one of two things is going to happen here, guys. Uh, the most probable scenario is we're going to continue lower is the sellers are going to step back into this market this is going to be a lower high this was our highest high and we would have kind of like i know this is kind of takes a creative eye to see but we kind of have like this giant head and shoulders being created right so um, i think we're going to go lower or we're going to break this high and move up higher but if you guys are familiar with with reading price action and being able to just read candlesticks and see the reaction from buyers and sellers, you can see that the sellers, this red candle, this red candle, and this red candle, there is a huge sell wall, a huge, huge level of resistance at almost like 158.50 one, one on the dot. It's kind of like the, the line in the sand, like the, the, you know, the line that you can't pass. And there's, there's, so there's more argument to the downside than there is to the upside. And that's just, that's in my opinion. So I think we're going to see this level break. But again, um, I'm not really going to get aggressive. And, you know, with, with these two trades that we took last week, I preferred to set on the cell right here on this drop. I preferred to set a, a trailing stop loss. 
really because we were at a major level of support, right? And obviously we saw that that, that came in handy. And when price came back up and we sold again right here based on, I didn't sell guys just because it came back up, right? I didn't sell. Let me be clear to, uh, for those of you guys that are new or those of you guys that are in the free group and watching this right now and didn't get to see all the analysis and breakdowns that I did in the private group, I didn't sell just because I had sold previously. I sold after this four hour candle. Um, I sold after this four hour candle because we got the confirmation, right? We got the, those candlesticks, they created nice selling pressure. Wicks on the top always mean a strong presence of sellers and just the nice rejection. We got a, we got a double top again at the 50% retracement level. So it wasn't just because, you know, there's a, there's a lot of reasons, not just one that I sold, but I used a trailing stop when it got down to this support again, because we were at this major support level. But once it breaks this zone, once it breaks this area, if, and when, if, and when it breaks through this area at that point, you know, I'm not going to be using my trailing stops as much. I would let a trade ride for a lot longer. So just to kind of give you guys an idea that you have to, you know, be like reactive. You have to really be able to like understand what's going on to know like when to use certain things. You know, you aren't always going to use a trailing stop. Sometimes, a lot of times you are going to use a trailing stop if you're doing range trading though. You know, if you're trading down to the bottom of a very significant support level or trading to the top of a very significant resistance level. Um, then that's where you're going to, you know, want to have trailing stops or, you know, definitely minimum, very minimum setting stop losses to break even. But you can see in this scenario where we sold last week that if I would have set my stop loss to break even, then, you know, the, the first trade, it would have gone stopped out. The second trade would still be, still be running, but yeah. So just kind of wanted to give you guys a breakdown. So watch these pairs. That's your AUD, NZD, JPY, dollar, yen and pound yen all of these pairs are interesting and then of course look at the dollar index but i'm just giving you guys a big warning this week to the people that are in the free group if you're not in the free group watching the webinars every single day if my bias changes because there's so much news this week there's probably a very good chance that my bias could change maybe not but there's a very good chance like the volatility and stuff could could make things change completely um so just be aware of that. And then uh, you guys saw the formal announcement inside of Telegram 2. Um, as of September 1st, we will no longer be offering the lifetime membership to positive traders. So you have until September 1st to get lifetime membership. Um, and then at, on September 1st, we're also going to be removing the monthly membership as well. Um, so there's not going to be any, there's going to be a three month membership, a six month membership, and a 12 month membership. The pricing is inside of Telegram if you didn't already see it and it's going to be like updated on the website when that happens. There's going to be lots of pricing updates. I'm mean, sorry, not pricing updates. There's going to be a lot of like notifications and letting you guys, you know, just being fully aware so you guys have the chance. But um, yeah, so that is that. So lots of things coming, lots of things changing. Uh, we have a lot of, a lot of good, just lots of news coming guys. So let's let this week play out. Let's let this month finish off strong. We have that 15% month. If you guys aren't connected to the free trade copier, by the way, um, here is the free trade copier results. So we, it's now been a little bit over a month. You can see that we started on June 18th of last month. So June 18th of last month, we started this free trade copier. So if you're watching this and you want to get involved with these trades, but everything is confusing to you. You don't know what's going on, but you just know that we're making money and you want to be involved in it. You can be connected to my trade copier. Um, this connects your trading, trading account to my trading account. Um, you get, have control, 100% control over your money, so I cannot touch your money. Um, you, you, you can add more money when, whenever you want. You can take your money out whenever you want. You can disconnect from it whenever you want if you aren't happy with it. Um, and the way it's free is we split profits. So any of the profits that I make you, um, let's say I make you $1,000. I keep 35% of that. You keep 65% of that. So you're actually keeping almost double what I'm keeping. So it's win-win. Uh, it's the same trading that I'm doing on my own account. So your account is just following what my account is doing. And you can see just this month from June 18th to, well, 
I guess it's been a little bit more than a month, a month and a week now, we've done a 12% gain, 12.5% gain. And, and this is the statistics down here. Last, last month, so the first month, we booked a small loss, 2% loss. And this month, we are at a 15% gain. So net 12.64%. Now, a lot of people go and look at the profitability. That doesn't really matter. We aren't really too concerned about how many trades are profitable, right? Because you can win three of your trades. You can win three trades and lose 10 trades and still be a profitable trader at the end of the day. So don't, don't ever look at like somebody's profitability. What you want to be looking at is um, things like profit factor. You want to have like a, 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 a good, this is a really, really high profit factor. Um, you don't really need anything this high, but this is, you know, the higher, the better basically. So this basically means that for every, you know, I'm, I'm always risking whatever I'm risking. I'm looking to make five and a half more of. So if I'm risking like 20 pips then I'm risking 20 pips on average to make like 110 pips, if that makes sense. Or actually I think that's a little bit more than 110 pips. Or I'm risking 2% to make 11%, if that makes sense. That's my average trade. So we have some nice growth. So just want to show you guys if this, if you're interested in getting connected to that, if, you, if you're interested in just getting involved and you have no idea how to, you're new to Forex, you want to get involved, shoot me a message after this webinar. Uh, you can contact me, Telegram, any, any form of social media, and I'll send you the link. You just have to set up an account with the broker that I use and then fund your account, verify your account and all that good stuff because it's your own account. And then fund it and it'll start copying my trades. We risk 2% per trade. So you can see the drawdown is 4%, but that's only, that's, that says the max drawdown it's been in, right? We went from a 0% trade down to negative 2%, right there, negative 1.96% to negative 4%. So it's, you'll only, only ever go back 2% of the time. All right. And then you have the possibility to gain a lot more than 2% at a time, you know, gain 10% at a time where you're only going to lose 2% at a time. So very low risk, very high reward, very conservative, slow compounded growth. That's what it's about. Right now it says we're averaging monthly 9.41%. Keep in mind that looks great on paper. All this looks great on paper, but this is going to average out, you know, one year from now, these numbers are definitely going to be very different. Uh, but at the very least, you know, I don't really care what any of these numbers are in a year from now, except this monthly and the overall gain. And then of course, like the drawdown too, right? I, but I would like to have the monthly at around 5% a month. That's what my goal is. If I can do more than 5% a month, great. But 60% a year compounded. I mean, you can see this right here. I know I show this all the time, but I, I just get so excited when I see this because you know, my account's on the way to growing just like all of your guys should be as well. All right. Let's say you took like 5k grew at 5% a month for the next 10 years. That's $1.7 million guys. That's like life changing amount of money off five grand. Or maybe, maybe not all of you guys have five grand, but I guarantee every single one of you guys should be able to save up a thousand bucks. It doesn't really matter where you live. Honestly, if you're watching this, you obviously have internet, and some sort of device, mobile device. So you're in some sort of, you're, you're somewhere where you have an opportunity to make money somehow, whether it's flipping things on Craigslist or whatever thing you guys, public community thing you guys have for selling things or whatever it is, you, you can find where there's a will, there's a way guys. You know, I'm sure you probably have some sort of money that you waste each month, whether if you spend money on drinking, going to the bar, you spend money on weed, you spend money on drugs, you spend money on whatever it is. I'm sure if you really care enough about your future, you can put a little bit of money aside. And if you really want to save a thousand bucks, every single person on here can save a thousand bucks. Guaranteed. doesn't matter where you live. Uh, $350,000 after 10 years, right? So you, so you might not have a lot to work with now. And even if you have 500 bucks, even if you have 500 bucks, if you can't save up 500 bucks, you shouldn't even be on these webinars. Straight up. $174,000 after 10 years, right? You might not have the money now, even five years, but you're going to, what I mean is you have money. So like guys, you have to know that this is long term. This is long, long, long term. If you aren't prepared for that, get out of here straight up. Like if, if you aren't prepared for the long term of this, if you're trying to flip your accounts, don't even follow me. I don't even want, I don't even want you on my team. I don't want you following me. I don't want to be around people that are, have that mentality of flipping accounts just straight up. 
I'm here for the long term. I'm here for the long term compounded growth. Um, I'm getting the opportunities right now to manage seven figure accounts with people because of the way I carry myself and I, and I, and I, you know, have, have my projections. I'm not in this business to turn a thousand bucks into a million dollars in a year, turn a thousand bucks to a million dollars in five years. It's not going to happen. Look at a thousand dollars in five years, a thousand dollars in five years isn't a million bucks. So if you guys have these types of goals, you really need to like, be real about yourself. If you only have a thousand bucks to your name right now and you're saying, I'm going to make a million dollars in Forex in the next five years, you're going to go broke straight up. Like I'm, I'm being real guys. Like you might, you might want to call me a hater, call what you will, <clears throat> but I'm being realistic. The best of the best of the best of the best are, are averaging 5% a month, right? So obviously I'm trying to be, I'm trying to, you know, get up there with the best of the best of the best, but you know, to be able to turn a thousand bucks to a million dollars in even five years, even 10 years, it's not going to happen, right? A million dollars. So I'm not, I'm not here to burst your guys' bubble, but look at that. That's still amazing growth. A thousand bucks in 10 years with 5% growth, realistic growth, 348,000 in 10 years. That's, that's something a little bit more realistic. So you, you need to ground yourself a little bit and just remember that this compounding is always better with the more you start with. Because if you have, let's, if you have $5,000, I'm pretty sure you can't make a million in five years. No, you actually can't make a million. That's, that's only 93,000 in five years, probably six years, 72. Yeah. Oh no, no, that's only, that's only 164,000. So the less you have, the more, the le the more, the longer it takes. But also remember that when you're looking at this, that when you're playing with this calculator, that this is only ever starting with this. This is there's no option in here to say like, you know, I'm going to add 500 bucks after six months or, you know, I'm going to add a hundred dollars every six months. So the fat, the more you add to it, the faster it's going to compound. You have $10,000 in five years at 5% a month, you have almost $200,000. So there is some serious wealth building potential. You really have to let it get to, oh, what is going on here? Hold on, you guys. I thought the numbers were looking a little bit weird. Let's see, 5% a month for the next five years. No, yeah, that's right, okay. 10,000 in 10 years. Yeah, all of this is looking good. So you guys can see how the long term, you just have to let it go long term. For some, for some of you guys, the balance in five years isn't going to be enough still, right? 5,000 bucks, 5% 5 a month, five years, $93,000. But you have to understand in those five years, now you have $93,000. Now you have money. You shouldn't stop at, what I'm trying to say is you shouldn't just stop after those five years. You shouldn't say, okay, cool. I turned $5,000 into $93,000 after five years. Boom. I'm done with Forex. I'm going to go buy a house or buy real estate. No, don't stop there. You're just getting started at the best part of compounding year one, year two, year three, year, year four. That that's boring. That's not, that's not fun, right? Your, your account's only growing by a little bit, but once you start to get like this fifth year, this sixth year, Year one to year five isn't the most fun, right? And that's why a lot of people fail at Forex because they can't handle the patience. They can't play the patience game, right? But if you can handle that patience game, look at year five. So year five, you, you have $93,000, right? You made in five years, you went from $5,000 to $93,000. So in five years, you made $88,000. Not a lot, right? Even if you average that out over those five years, that's less than $20,000 a year. That's not, I mean, it's a nice little side income, but it's not like, a crazy extravagant lifestyle, but look at what you do from year five to year 10. You go from $93,000 to $1.7 million. So now those next five years, instead of only making $88,000 in five years, you made one point, you know, you made 1.7, almost 1.7 million, $1.65 million in five years. And that's where literally com the compounding, you guys have to just let the compounding work for you if you don't have a lot of money.
Okay. And guys, I'm literally there. I am a living, a living uh, image of what I preach. Four or five years ago, when I started in Forex, I started with a couple thousand dollars. I wasn't able to quit my job right away. I had to wait and wait and wait until I had about twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Then I could, then I was able to quit my job. Now my account's over six figures, and I'm I'm literally on that path. So. That's it, guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Um, I'll catch you guys next week, but take care, guys. Have a great week and have, safe, have a safe trading week. Take care, guys.